Hey cats, it's Ed, Armoured Bud here. I got a brand spanking new shoe review for your eyes and ears. Today I get to test out one radioactive looking shoe. It's the Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite. I've been looking forward to testing this one out for a long time. This is the first high-end carbon equipped super shoe from Under Armour. Is this the Steph Curry of super shoes or will it simply bow out in the first round of the playoffs? Let's find out. Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Help the channel out by picking up some merch. I'm wearing some right now myself. It's all now. I do appreciate you tuning in, hit that subscribe button. We're getting closer and closer to 40K subs now. Also give this video a thumbs up like that, really helps out a lot. Danke schön. This is a shoe that's been sent over to me from Under Armour for review. Though they're not gonna be vetting my views before my valued viewers, not being paid to make this video or anything. Okay, so we have the quite beautiful Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite here. It's a mixture of their flow midsole material, but also a P-Bax layer on top. It's more like a compacted pellet P-Bax here though. Probably more similar to the stuff you see in Saucony shoes. The carbon plate is almost as crispy and tasty as the best bacon that I sampled in Boston last week. In my UK size 11 or US size 12, we got 267 grams here, 9.4 ounces. So it's a good 30 grams or so heavier than the Vaporfly Next% 3. That still is the lightest of super shoes. A touch heavier than the Adios Pro 3 from Adidas. I think that one was about 257 grams. So there's not much in it really. We had 253 grams in the Hoka Rocket X2. So this one's a little bit heavier, but it doesn't really feel like that on foot or even in hand, to be honest. And considering the stranglehold that Adidas have got on the marathon podiums right now, I think you need to put less worry into weight and more into your training. But that's another story. We'll get to that some other time. I've got about 43 millimeters of stack in the heel of my shoe and about 35 millimeters in the fore. For. makes for about an 8-ish mil drop. We got about 12 centimeters of width here in the widest part of the mid to forefoot and there's about 8.5 centimeters of width back here in the heel at the widest point of course. So it's certainly a race-like feel underfoot. Now I have a measuring of a super soft 22 on the shore a durometer scale for that p layer on top and a firmer 37 shore a for the flow section underneath. So how did it shape up on my initial run? We'll start with the upper first as usual. Otherwise you've got a super thin layer of mesh here. It's pretty much see-through and then those thin strips secure you into the shoe. There is a bit of reinforcement around the toe box and a more traditional sort of heel counter here though it feels like most of the work is done by this sort of plastic overlay that you've got on the rear of the shoe it's quite a japanese vibe here reminds me a little bit of the asics meta ride woven version that released a while back in terms of the design we got some standard material there around the eyelets and the tongue feels a bit like a more refined version of that scene in the flow velocity wind from before it's padded only where necessary and there's no gusseting here whatsoever I didn't get any tongue slippage from side to side, so I don't think it's too much of an issue. It's a super simple upper design, really. There's not too many gimmicks here. Just that one simple Under Armour overlay here. And of course, that section at the back. Very much like the profile of the shoe. It really does feel nice on foot. Slightly wider in the toe box, maybe. I would suggest going true to size on this one. In previous Under Armour shoes, I felt going up maybe a half size was a good idea. Not so in the Flow Velocity Elite. Lace length spot on, guys. Well done. Either standard bow or runner's knot, you've got ample lace length. So you'll be fumbling around like some sort of burk. I found the lockdown easy to achieve here. I just laced the shoe up and I didn't think about it again. I have to say it's one of the most breathable shoes in terms of upper. It was absolutely pelting it down at one point today. I got very, very wet, just saturated. There was water dripping off of the GoPro. I mean, maybe aside from the Vaporfly 3 or the Endorphin Pro 3, I mean, those have got holes in. This thing is seriously light in terms of the upper. There's a little bit of water got soaked up in the heel but not a lot certainly one of the most comfortable super shoe uppers i've used in a long time does feel almost like a daily trainer sort of vibe really 
though very weight relieved. I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 3 for the upper after my initial runs. Only lowered a little bit by the sponge-like tongue and I'm just wondering how long these kind of fabric pieces are going to hold up. We shall see. Midsole, midsole, midsole now. So we've got a bit of a combo here, as I mentioned earlier, the very small PBAX pellets that have been kind of compacted together. Think kind of like Endorphin Pro 3, but the actual pieces seem much, much smaller. Perhaps almost like the vibe of those old Reebok Run Fast series shoes that use the PBAX stuff. I think fans of the Pegasus 35 Turbo or the Turbo 2 will like this shoe. It's kind of got a similar vibe, I suppose, where you're sort of sandwiching the stuff on top of each other, although this time we've got the crispy plate. I found it very comfortable and almost effortless, I suppose, at marathon pace. For me, that's about 7 minutes 30 per mile, so about 4 minutes 40 per kilometre. Yeah, I'm not lightning fast. I never was really, but I enjoy running. That's kind of what matters, isn't it? The underfoot sensations are energizing. Assured, I suppose, but quite exciting all the same. It's got more rigidity, of course, due to that carbon plate between the two midsole materials, but we very much have a reverse of the Adios Pro 1 and 2 approach here. That had a much sort of firmer section on top and then the softer stuff underneath. Very odd. So you've got the denser foam closer to the floor, which also kind of acts as the outsole. I'll talk about that a bit later. I think Under Armour really and the flow material is most famous really for Steph Curry and his Golden State guys. He's a three-point master, of course, but it does seem to work here for running as well. That p layer closer to the foot, providing a superb forgiving layer atop that carbon plate. So a little bit of that Pegasus Turbo magic here that everybody's missing, but it's a new shoe. It's a race-ready shoe, and it's lighter. I mean, what's not to like about all of that, right? I did have to ease back the pace a little bit at times, looking down at the watch, and I was going way over my target. It was quite crazy. One of the viewers commented actually on Strava about the effort level there and the heart rate. Yeah, it really was one of those runs today. The watch was telling me to have a rest. I'd had a particularly taxing day, but that's the sign of a really good fast paced shoe. If you're putting in little effort, but getting lots out of it. The plate certainly giving the Flow Velocity Elite a little bit more snap than the Flow Velocity Wind. Doesn't feel anywhere near as dense or as heavy on foot as those more sort of daily shoes. I always wondered what the Flow material would be like without the Under Armour Map My Run sort of tech built into the shoe, adding on weight, and of course using some of that more advanced foam as well. Now we've got that and it's everything I wanted it to be really. I think the shoe doesn't lack stability if you are a heel striker or perhaps you over pronate. It does a good job of kind of correcting things but in a very sort of encouraging way I suppose. There is a slight cupped nature to the foam but more in the mid to forefoot area. Just feels like it's containing the foot a little better as you sort of push forward. The insole is made of TPE and it is replaceable. You can simply remove it with almost no effort. So if you you do want to put your own insoles in there to further customize the fit you can i have to say the shoe certainly feels very quick and i guess the rigidity and the forgiving nature of the shoe here remind me a little bit of the original zoom fly fly knit right, it's certainly a less heavy shoe than the old nike from a few years back but let's not forget like ultra soft doesn't always make for a great shoe sometimes things can be just too compressive you want a nice balance and i feel that that's what under armor have got here in the Flow Velocity Elite. It's like a slightly more aggressive feel to it than the Carbon X2 from Hoka. In future runs, I do want to see how it performs down to 5K. I don't think it's going to be left in the sort of dust by any of the other super shoes. I think everything's pretty much on a level now, but nonetheless, I do want to see how it hits the spot on those faster speeds. Enjoying the midsole there, but I need to do a bit more testing yet as an initial score of 2.7, I think hits the mark, but very, very promising so far. Outsole now. And it's where some of the super shoes actually really slip up. I have no pun intended there. Now the outsole is kind of also part of the midsole here. That's what you get with the flow material. This time it's sculpted even more than the flow velocity wind. So we've got really great traction in fact, even on wet surfaces. 
it was very wet out there today they have created a bit of a cut out as well from the heel through to the midfoot to save a little bit more weight and the typical stretching of that pattern in certain areas to also improve the traction as per usual this stuff i find it grippy and absolutely appropriate for road and pavement use no real problems on tarmac or concrete and i found the durability of the flow material to be actually very very good a few people have said what well, under armor flow material What's all that about then? But no, I don't think these people have actually got it on foot and tested it out. I have and I really like it. So in terms of durability, really, I don't see any worries there going forward. Like I said, in wet conditions, it was absolutely superb. Even on smooth surfaces, which can sometimes be the nemesis of such materials. I mean, we've all used the Hoka Rincon and things like that. I think the shoe is certainly aimed, though, at those longer distance efforts. This is their marathon shoe, after all, and... I think I could quite easily use it for a marathon. It was almost easy today at my marathon pace. So surprising how good the grip was considering the lashings of rain and standing water out there. Some puddles I had to wade through. It really held fast on the corners and those quick turns. So before you judge the book by the cover, don't read the first few chapters, of course. Don't make an assumption about traction without getting it on foot. I think my only reservation was the considerable amount of grit and debris that was picked up by the flow outsole here. But yeah, you can't have it all, can you? In terms of the women's race and 2020 New York Marathon, I think that was won by someone wearing this shoe. So it's got some decent pedigree. Well, I'm going to give it a 2.9 after my initial runs for the outsole it was blooming good today better talk value super shoes are always a bit of a trade-off i think between like weight and also the kind of nimble propulsive feel not everybody wants something that's super soft some people want something that's a little bit firmer this kind of sits somewhere in the middle i think it certainly isn't the lightest of super shoes if you want that go for the vaporfly 3 or the a6 Met speed sky plus but some people may get a lack of comfort there this has a little bit more of that i mean you want a shoe that feels good from between 5k to like 35k don't you i mean after that you probably ain't going to be feeling that good anyway. I think Under Armour are looking to the masses actually a little bit more with this shoe. It's going to be a little bit more consistent underfoot and I think that's going to work for a wider range of people than saying like the Vaporfly 3. It's not saying that it's some sort of clunker or anything. It's certainly got some pep, some squash and propulsion there. I believe the Pellet p foams are a little bit more durable. There's a bit more longevity to them than Zoom X. I mean that foam is fantastic but you can't say it has long range durability. It just doesn't it does tear quickly don't think you'll get the same problems here it's somewhere in the same ballpark as the puma nitro elite material or perhaps like strike pro from adidas i mean it's almost like polystyrene this stuff really very light yet still has the flexibility and durability that you want but they've got rid of the rubber which is a section of the shoe that often adds a lot of weight so it does really kind of stand out on its own there's nothing else quite like it i have to say out the box the build of the under armor shoe is fantastic there's no weird glue marks or poor stitching or anything like that it just feels like a really nice quality item there's no weird little plastic bits sticking out from the molds or anything like that i guess the one sticking point here it's 225 earth credits here in the uk i mean that's on par with the hoka rocket x2 cheaper than the vaporfly next percent three and about the same as the adios pro three and a little bit more expensive than the endorphin pro three of course everything is cheaper than the endorphin elite i mean many super shoes are around about that price these days they've all got very similar forgiving rides i think the key factor really is picking a vehicle that's going to take you from the start to the finish with a decent amount of comfort without having too much weight and also something you can perhaps use in training as well that isn't just going to disintegrate after you've done your premium speed sessions as such i can recommend this shoe for people that want a little bit more toe box room here and perhaps a more locked in fit here in the heel where you've got that more traditional sort of counter it's also an incredibly breathable shoe so perhaps if you're running in a climate that's extremely hot or perhaps if it's very wet this one actually could work very well i think if you want a bit of stability so it isn't going to completely collapse on the medial side then the flow velocity elite could work as such i think it's in the same sort of category as the puma deviate nitro elite 2 although i think the puma shoe's got a slightly more alluring price there is it like 50 pounds cheaper or something i think it's still got the edge a little bit for me so slightly lower value score there of 2.6 out of 3 i still think it's a superb super shoe but perhaps for a more specific user in mind if I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us 11 out of 12. 
for the Flow Velocity Elite from Under Armour. Have you been waiting for this shoe to release? I certainly have, and it's lived up to my expectations. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one down in the comments. Musical interlude for you. Quite often people ask me about making a YouTube channel, they want to start one up, what should they do, what are my tips? My main tip is to be yourself and not try and be like all of the other channels. Do your own thing. Some people might kind of laugh at you for doing that, your character perhaps, the way you look, the way you talk, something like that. I get lots of comments like that all the time. I just delete them and block the people. Anyway, why am I telling you all of this? Well, one of the songs I've been listening to recently is one of my favorites from Ben Folds, The Best Imitation of Myself. I always recommend to people to be themselves. Don't draw too much from other people. Do what feels right in your heart and in your head. And that seems to get you to good places, places that you should be. Whenever you start copying other people, whether that's, you know, specific videos that they make or the way that they do things, certain slogans that they say, it just starts feeling really kind of corny. It's just some sort of like facsimile of something else. It's the same with like playing guitar or something or, you know, dressing the way you want to dress. Just wear the things that make you feel comfortable. Don't react to peer pressure. Don't feel like you have to wear a pair of puma socks with your puma shoes if the adidas ones feel good wear those you know go and listen to the track anyway it's got fantastic piano playing and loads of wonderful parts that are stitched together by ben folds the best imitation of myself thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed the review hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name is ed bud and i'll be seeing you Hey people, Headbutt here. I think uh, runners are the special kind of maniacs that particularly enjoy going out in the rain. I've always enjoyed going out in the rain, in fact, since I was a young lad. I used to get in from school, put on my football boots and go and run around in the back garden, just kicking the ball about and generally getting muddy. And that's just been something that's sort of inbuilt into me and it's still there, you know, 43 years later. I still like doing the same things. Don't think I'll ever grow up really, but I think that's part of staying young, isn't it? Forever young, doing the things you love and uh, not getting dragged down and made to feel stupid doing those things, I suppose. Hmm. Right, I need a shower. <laughs>